NPDR, new vessels grow along the arcades using posterior hyaloid as a scaffold. These progress to form fibrovascular and contractile epiretinal membranes. Membranes grow and contract to give rise to tractional RD. Breaks develop and lead to combined regmatogenous and tractional RD. Finding proper plane of dissection remains a challenge in the current membrane removal techniques of segmentation, delamination or end block dissection, often there is a need of fourth port or combination instruments. Our experience tells us that pre-operative intravitreal injection of anti-VEGF aids in bloodless membrane dissection. Dissection of membranes is easier if plane of dissection is proper. Vitreous kisses causes second membranes under the prominent membranes. The second membrane is usually fused with the primary membrane at the disc and it is easier to work around the tractional points rather than to cut or peel them. Few surgical techniques help in management of combined RD. These include pre-operative anti-VEGF, micro-invasive 27-gauge vitrectomy, around the table membrane dissection, conventional peeling techniques and bimanual dissection. Pre-operative Avastin given 3 to 4 days prior to vitrectomy helps in decreasing the vascularity of membranes thus reduces the bleeding during dissection. In this case, antravitreal avastin given one day prior to surgery resulted in decrease of vascularity in a highly vascular membrane making the surgery easier. Hardly any bleeding was seen while dissecting the membrane. Proportional reflux in current machines also helps in separation of epiretinal membranes from the retina. Postoperatively the retina was attached and the vision improved to 6 by 9. Small gauge instrument especially 27 gauge have revolutionized the way we manage combined RD. The small size of the cutter enables it to go in between very small crevice thus eliminating the need for scissors. It can even go between the aperitoneal membrane and retina, lifting the membrane up and separating it from overlying retina. This enables a safe dissection of membranes. The small sphere of influence avoids retinal tissue being engaged in the cutter while cutting these membranes. 7 times low flow rate as compared to 23 gauge helps to work very close to the mobile retina without causing any collateral damage. Small port of 27 gauge cutter lies very close to the tip, this allows the cutter to easily lift grasp and dissect membranes without the need of forceps, thus frequent exchange of instruments is avoided and vitrectomy becomes faster. Both eyes of this 27 year old girl were operated using 27 gauge instruments, post operative recovery was good and vision improved considerably. Around the table dissection involves two steps, first, is to remove the membrane from optic disc with the help of forceps thus creating a proper plane of dissection. The second is to create a wedge between central and peripheral retina and induce PVD in the peripheral retina, this helps us to attack the tough aperitoneal membranes from all around. Peripheral vitreous acts as a third hand and keeps the posterior membrane held up while dissection, this eliminates the need for bimanual dissection. Again you can see that the small sphere of influence and low flow rate of 27 gauge cutter avoids retinal tissue be engaged into the cutter while working very close to the retina. The cutter is being used as a forceps, suction and scissors rolled into one instrument. Even a very mobile retina remains quite stable during vitrectomy. The advantages of this technique are that the peripheral vitreous holds up the posterior membranes for effective dissection without resorting to bimanual surgery or combination instruments. Second membranes are not missed and need not be dissected separately. 
The limitation of the previous technique is that it is not possible to perform when the optic disc is not visible. In this condition, conventional membrane peeling from the periphery to the center is done till we reach the disc. 27 gauge vitrectomy is again helpful in dissecting these membranes, as its small size enables it to enter very small spaces and dissect the vascular AP centers effectively. It also acts as a peeler and separates the retina from membrane during dissection. The key here is to enter underneath the membrane with the port of the cutter pointing upwards till you face some resistance, withdraw the cutter a little bit, start cutting the membrane while withdrawing the cutter further, find another crevice and repeat the procedure, keep doing this till you are able to isolate the epicenter which can then be dissected easily, if you are not able to perform this maneuver, then look for second membranes. Once we reach the disc, the forceps is used to separate the membrane from the disc and further dissection becomes easier. Bimanual dissection is rarely used to dissect membranes which are very thick and highly vascular. A chandelier light source is used for illumination. We can use forceps and scissors or a diathermy and scissors to dissect these highly vascular thick membranes. Care has to be taken to lift the membrane very gently and cut the vascular epicenters with a curved scissor one by one. If there is heavy bleeding we can use diathermy probe with the cutter or a scissor. Combined RD with a macular hole is a special condition where peeling of ILM becomes mandatory. ILM peeling can be done with the help of brilliant blue or ICG dye. ILM peel can be done with or without inverted flap technique. In this case, the membrane dissection was done as usual with around the table technique. When the traction on the retina was completely relieved, ICG dye was used to stain the ILM and ILM peeling was done without inverted flap. Post-operatively the macular hole was closed and the retina was well attached. Combination of the mentioned techniques have helped us achieve success in above 90% of our cases of combined RD with highly complex and vascular membranes presenting as stable top detachments.